morning. Listening to this show may result in increased levels of inspiration, motivation, and innovation. Side effects can include the immediate urge to take massive action to build a better business and life for yourself and others. You've been warned. Welcome to Influencers Radio with your host, Jack Mize. And welcome back to another episode of Influencers Radio. Um, you know, sales is a game. You always hear it, the game of sales. Well, I'll tell you right now, sales is a game of pressure. You're under pressure to earn commissions. You're under pressure to close the prospect. And if you're a business owner or a sales manager, you're under pressure to keep your team performing and motivated by their success. Uh, you know, for a salesperson, when they choose a life in business and sales, so they literally risk it all. A lot of people don't realize that it's almost equated to waking up every day unemployed where they got to go out and make something happen. Their income, their security, their homes and their reputation uh, are on the line and everything rises and falls on the ability to close sales with confidence and with a certain level of predictability. Well, my guest today is John Blake. And for the past 27 years, he has been one of the most highly successful salespeople, sales manager, business owner, uh, author, and a sales and marketing consultant. And over the last 10 years, he's actually been teaching others his proven formula for cracking open the vault to unlock huge sales growth. Um, and it's been applied in hundreds of businesses in over 34 industries. And like I said, now he's helping people explode sales results using um, a unique process that empowers both th them and their clients to be 100% sincere. And when I say his approach is unique, it's because every sales strategy and idea that he teaches has been thoroughly road tested and proven by him first. He's the author of High Stakes Selling Real Life highly effective strategies for winning sales when it really counts. So welcome to Influencers Radio, John Blake. John, welcome. Thanks, Jack. Good to be here, mate. Well, it's good to be here. You know that that accent of yours. It's, uh, what is that, <laughs> North Carolina, South Carolina? I think it's... Uh... <laughs> Uh, fairly uh, uniquely Australian, I think. <laughs> so let's talk about... One, I got to ask, because I sales people, people that earn their living through commission sales, and you know, it's not necessarily um, something that a lot of people have the stomach for. And one thing that I know is that no one wakes up and says, you know what, when I grow up, I'm going to be a salesperson. So <laughs> I always like to find out what, how did it happen? Did, did you, did you get up one day? What hit you? What bug bit you that made you decide that that's what you were going to do? Yeah, it's it, that's a good question, and and I guess the at the time I was seventeen, and I was all I was really ever thinking about at that particular time in my life was how can I go surfing as much as what I possibly can, and I was sponsored to surf competitively in in here in in Western Australia in in Perth and. The guy that I was writing for was the agent for Quicksilver and Rip Curl, and I was I was sponsored by by those two brands. And he saw me at a petrol station one morning where I'd I'd organised my car had broken down, and I'd organised with the guy that owned the service station to put a new battery in my car so that I could get to technical college, which is where I was going at that particular time. I was doing like an art course graphic design course and and uh my sponsor i saw him at the at the service station he said oh he said you know are you okay do you need a lift anywhere or and i said no no it's all good i've organized the new battery and my my dad's going to come down and and fix the service station guy up a bit later and i could sort of see him thinking you know sort of like you know looking at me and, and, I, and I thought oh, that's weird <laughs> i didn't really think much else about it but about two or three weeks later, he called my folks because I was still under 18 and and started to talk to them about the possibility of me going and working there. So to go work there 
I, you know, I, I'm sure that there was some kind of mention about business or sales or whatever, but my primary motivator to go work there was to get free surf stuff. You know, I was going to get, you know, free wetsuits and clothing and backpacks. And <laughs> so it wasn't until I'd actually been doing it for about two or three years that I realized that I was in a sales role. So you had a passion for sales. Actually, you had a passion for surfing and, and did sales uh, kind of provide you a way to, 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 uh, to that path. Yeah, huh? I, was, yeah. I, I was passionate about surfing. So it was, it was a very easy thing for me to sell because I was so passionate about the sport. So it was, it was a very easy thing for me to talk about. It was a very easy thing for me to be able to sell because obviously, you know, enthusiasm is such a massive part of, of selling anything. You know, it's, it, as, as it's, it's often been said, sales is a transference of, of feelings or, or, or of, of energy. And if you've got that high enthusiasm, then that, that makes it a lot easier to, to sell anything. You know, one thing I really enjoyed about, um, about your book, uh, The High Stakes uh, Selling, is the storytelling, uh, in just like the story you just told. So h- how important is storytelling in, uh, in sales? And is it uh, a skill, a craft that can be learned is it, is it something that really um, adds a lot to someone's success if they get good at that yeah look in in my programs I'm a I'm an absolute zealot for, for for storytelling and and the structure around what allows you to be able to really sell anything through 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 a story but in terms of of the the way the book's written I I wrote the book that I would really love to have read, you know, when I was learning sales and I've read literally hundreds of books on sales and so many of them are so dry and, and difficult to get through because they're just theory. And so I felt that one, you've got the practical aspect of, of a real life story. And then the the key lesson that comes in off the back of it, which just makes it a, a, a lot easier book to read. So, so I literally wrote the book that I would really love to have been able to have access to when I, when I was learning, but yeah, storytelling is a massive part of, of sales and and it is really the finest and most elegant way to be able to explain or sell anything. As you tell that story and we talk about the, the importance of, of uh, storytelling, a lot of people think that that's something that's a, a gift that people have. And they think that being a great salesperson is a gift because they see a lot of the celebrity salespeople, you know, some of the big names out there. And they just said, you know, they, they were born with, with this magnetism. That's not something that I can learn. Um, what do you say to that? I think that if you, it's like anything, if you have a willingness and an enthusiasm to become good at something, I think you can become good at it. In my experience, and, and this is a, a very, very old argument, not, not just as it relates to sales, but as it relates to anything, it's that whole nature versus nurture thing. But in my experience, there are people who have a willingness and an enthusiasm to become good at selling. They can become good at selling. They may not be in the top five percent producers in their industry but they can become good at selling someone who has a who has a need who has a requirement to be able to become good at selling and often this happens with clients who are who have become good at a particular skill so that you know they have a particular skill set and then the bad news arrives one day that they actually have to become good at selling it and 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 it's inconvenient but it's it's possible for them to become to become good at it, to become to get to a level at it where they can do it themselves, and then if they're a business owner, they have an understanding of of what represents a, a, a good sales outcome or a good sales system, and then they can teach it to somebody else. So that's you know often the role that we facilitate with people is is creating a system around what they sell so that they can then teach it to somebody else and get the same result. And one of the things that uh, you talk about. In, in your book, uh, I think it's uh, chapter 16, uh, the, the why you need a sales process is something that I didn't think about, but then I realized that it's what a lot of great salespeople do, or rather what they don't do. And that's um, focusing on the product. And, I, and I'll let you dig into that, but I think that that was a fa- the fascinating uh, aspect of sales. 
Yeah, and it's it's one of the things. It's probably the most common mistake that I that I see salespeople making is that they feel as if they should start talking about the product or or begin their product demonstration or their product presentation as soon as possible. And the reason that's a mistake is is probably the best analogy to use is 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 the doctor analogy. And it's it's the equivalent of walking into a doctor's surgery and just having them before you've even opened your mouth say, oh, um, you, you're sick, eh? you should have some of these pills. You know, um, these pills are going to help you, you know, regardless of, of what's wrong with you. They're really good. And I get paid a good permission, a good commission to sell these pills. And, you know, that, that they've, they've helped a lot of my clients and you should buy some with, without really finding out what's going on in that particular person's world. And, and look, I mean, there's a number of reasons why that's important, why, you know, diagnosis is, is such a powerful part of the sales process. But, but by default, in the absence of having a sales process, which is obviously what we talk about in chapter 16, the, the, the normal default position is for a salesperson to simply start talking about the product because that's what they're trained in. A lot of companies have what they call in adverted commas a sales training uh, process, but in most cases it's not really a sales training process at all. It's, it, it, they're just getting taught about product. They're getting product information so that they know about stuff so that, so that when they're standing in front of a client they can just talk about product. And it's a mistake because it doesn't create any engagement, it doesn't allow um, diagnosis which creates authority, and 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 it gives you average results, really average results. <laughs> yeah, and and you know I think there's something that is probably contrary to what a lot of people think on those preconceived ideas about sales. That well, what do you mean? You know, don't talk about the product. That's that's what I'm. Uh, you know, that's what I'm selling. So here's something that might be tough to reconcile. Look, it, it's you need to talk about the product, but it needs to happen in the right syntax. So, so, you know, to, to really go back to the, to the doctor analogy, it's, it's prescription without diagnostic, you know, without the proper diagnostic can easily be malpractice. You know, you, if, if you don't diagnose properly, you could easily be prescribing the person the wrong product. So product is important, but product needs to be paired with the right diagno- diagnosis, if that makes sense. Oh yeah, absolutely. And and do you see that people that, you know, claim to be great salespeople, you know, I can sell ice to Eskimos, right? That that I can sell anything. Um, how important is that the the product that you're selling or your belief in the product or the that your understanding of the that there's actually a market for that product out there that you're selling? <laughs> It's a, such a good point, and, and the the one of the things that salespeople can do, given that they've got a choice as to who they can work for, or if you're if you're thinking about starting a business, you've got a choice as to which product you want to sell, is sell a product that there is a good growing market for, and sell in an industry that's growing. If you're you know if you if you try and get into so for instance. Uh, an industry that is not growing at the moment is print media. So if you want to become a, a salesperson in the print media space, you're going to have to work your ass off to to get to a point where you're perceived as 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 producing a lot of sales. You're talking Whereas, about selling selling ads in in magazines, newspapers, yeah, that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, because, yeah. Because, because print media isn't growing. So if you're going to choose uh, an industry to go into, choose an industry. That's growing. So if you, you know, say, let's say you've got the, the the choice of going into print media, or you've got the choice of going into selling software, especially sort of software in the cloud type solutions. Get, you know, go into the, an industry that's growing. Software uh, at the moment is 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 huge. I'm I'm working with with two or three different software sell- resellers at the moment because it 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 creates efficiencies within businesses. So people need it. There's a good solid business case for it and there's demand for it so you can do a good job which most salespeople are out there doing a good job but you can but your results can be perceived as excellent because you're on a train that's actually moving faster than the other train so if the, so if a train is an is an analogy for for an industry 
in any given market, certain industries are growing uh, bigger than other industries. So there are certain trains that are moving faster than other trains. So you can do a good job and be and be perceived as a legend <laughs> because you're in an industry that's growing. So you know, so it's, it's go where the money is. You know, go where there's growth and go with a product that's unique. Otherwise, you know, you're you're in a commoditized market and makes your life you can make life a lot harder for yourself than what you need to. And you know, you brought something up. You, you said something that I want to kind of um, hit on that that may be a, a pain point for for some. Uh, you, you said good salespeople, right? And I think there's a lot of people that that if they're not salespeople, or even if they are salespeople, they they recognize this, and they've seen people be successful with it. They've also seen so p- people be miserable with it. It's what I guess you'd call bully sales tactics rather than than you know sell that experience or share that you know how a product can really help someone or um, that diagnosis and prescribing that you mentioned uh, they take a, another tactic of well let me just beat this person into submission to buy the, the product I'm, I'm gonna make them buy the product uh, and I don't see it as much anymore but it was certainly a tactic as well that some were they're proud of, you know, 10, 20 years ago that I, you know, I, I uh, strong armed them into buying this and they bought it. So where does that fall into place or, or does it even have a place anymore in, in the sales world? And do you see that happening a lot still? Look, it's, it's, it's not a new problem. And unfortunately it hasn't, it hasn't gone away. So there are certain, certain industries and certain salespeople that still operate that way. And and it is primarily why salespeople get such a bad reputation. And, and in terms of my philosophy on that, my experience is that if you drag someone kicking and screaming over the line to do business with you, the possibility of them becoming an absolute like nightmare client is very high. So there's almost a, a, a disproportionate relationship between how hard you had to close somebody and the likelihood of them becoming an absolute nightmare to deal with. So, and I think it's also symptomatic of, of the, the previous point that we were talking about, which is, you know, in industries where, where the, where the, or in, in businesses where the product just isn't that good. So they actually do have to close the person hard to, to, to make a sale rather than selling them something that they actually have a really a really strong need for in an industry that's growing. So so I think you know the, the, the previous point is related to this to this point, but um, in my experience, you don't need to close people hard. you know like if, if you have to close somebody that hard, you're better to move on to the next person and get a, and get a client that's going to be better to deal with because there's a clearer and more present need for what it is that you're actually selling to them in the first place. One of the common themes in your book, and I think it's so important and, and it's probably something that so many can benefit from, is your your belief and your ability to uh, help folks build uh, confidence and, and the mindset around being a great salesperson. What role does confidence play in um, sales success? It's massive, and and it's I mean the, the data around it in in and of itself is 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 particularly telling. I mean on the telephone, only only twenty percent of of your communication relates to the words that you actually use. Eighty percent of your communication relates to the pitch of your voice, the cadence in your voice, the volume in your voice. Which, which is all underpinned by your mindset and, and, and just as we've been talking about your confidence. Face to face, I think it's something like 94% is your body language, the, the, the pitch, the cadence and the, and the tonality in your voice. And, and only 6% is, is the actual words that you use. So everything that, that, that relates to the stuff that's not the words is, is rooted in confidence and and confidence there's there's three keys there's the confidence that you have or the way that you feel about yourself there's the confidence that you have or the way that you feel about the product that you sell 
and there's the confidence that you have and the way that you feel about your company's ability to deliver on the promises that you're actually out in the marketplace making. So confidence is massive. It's such a huge part of it and it's it's the 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 common denominator that that I hear both through salespeople and through the business owners that hire me to help their salespeople. It's like, you know, I want my guys to be more confident. You know, they need to be more confident in certain situations. They need to have the tools to be able to be more confident. It's, a, it's such a huge part of, of, of what it is that we help people to do. And, well, I think that is a huge part, and I think it's really evidenced, you know, when you look at what you're doing and and the um, the ways that you're helping people and, and the, uh, you know, what you share and teach uh, in your book that makes it so unique because you said, what was that, 6% you said is, is of what you say of the words that you say? Yeah, you know, yeah. It's, it's such a small part, you know, it, it, it's the... It's that congruent, you know, that's the face-to-face part of it. On the phone, it's, it, it's obviously, you know, 20% because all you've got is the auditory. You haven't got the visual. You haven't got the body language. You haven't got any of that, any of that sort of stuff. But it's, it's, a, it's, it's such an alarmingly small amount of, of, uh, of, of what goes on in terms of how, how you are perceived by your, by your potential client. I think that's where a lot of people get taken down the wrong path because there's so many training out there and so many sales um, information that focuses on, you know, learn to be, be the fast talker. You know, you're, you're quick on your feet, yeah. you, you, you know, that kind of thing. And I know with, uh, you know, what you're doing, it, it's it is about teaching people how to build confidence, which I think is probably more valuable than just about any training on here's what to say but your your the, the confidence that you teach on on the i guess that the how to say it and also i think um what is also really unique is the fact that um someone that lacks confidence that, that lacks confidence in their in their um their sales ability maybe in themselves you do mindset uh, a lot of mindset work around there. And so people, rather than trying to convince someone to buy their, their stuff, you do a lot of, of, of training with helping people get over obstacles that are going on in your, your own mind. And one of the ones that really made me chuckle, uh, was in your book you talked about and you brought it up and I didn't realize it till I asked you, uh, is a term called, uh, the, uh, whinger, whinger, winger. Did, uh, yeah. I've already. Right. Yeah. So, so talk about the, the the whinger. Am I saying it right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Look, it, it, it's an Australian term, and and it you know it's the same as as like a whiner or a complainer, and and in the in the book I, I talk about how how I became infected with that particular disease, and it was it was around the time when I represented. Uh, a company that I had had great success representing in my wholesale business and their product had just passed its particular popularity life cycle and and because it was such it had been such a huge part of my business I instead of instead you know I was a I was an independent wholesaler so I could literally represent any anybody or any product that I wanted to and instead of just taking responsibility and, and looking for the next thing to to represent or to sell I just started complaining and 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 I sort of talk about this whole you know whinging my mindset which is which is where you're a hundred percent externally focused on on your own situation and your own circumstances and how it's such a trap in terms of mindset and so you know that that's I guess the story that 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 parlays into the whole confidence piece uh, in the book. So, given this, and I, and I think that's why you know I said at the top of the show that what you do is is unique because it's you know these are strategies that you've tested in the real world, um, and not just by you, but you've taught so many people. Um, you know how to use these strategies and again they weren't people that were born with that uh, uh golden tongue or the gift of gab or whatever that gift is uh that that people think that they might have to have to be a great salesperson so how uh, do you have an example uh perhaps maybe you could tell of how uh someone that uh has you know 
been in your community or through your training how they someone that maybe did lack that confidence in themselves or their sales ability um, or, or even their sales training, how they were able to overcome those obstacles or those fears and become not just you know someone making a living at sales, but someone that uh, is truly enjoying success as a salesperson. Yeah, and look, the, I, I think one of the best examples. I mean, there's, there, there are a lot of examples that I could share, but but one of the one of the best examples that comes to mind is a gentleman that came to me who is he's a he's a property he advises people on on buying investment properties and building a building a a a high value property portfolio, and he's a he's he's a very technical guy and, and he's gone and, and he's a he's a great example of his own best advice. He's he's built a, a really good property portfolio and he has done really well, but he is a he's, he's a quite a pretty quiet guy, you know, like he's not an extrovert. He has never done any sales. Obviously he's done well in terms of property, but that's his core area of expertise. He's not a sales guy. And so he came along and he attended one of my trainings and he has gone from from having almost no one come on board with him as a client to now, you know, every now and then I'll hear from him and he'll say, oh, I had three meetings this week and all of them have come on board as a client. So, so you know, th- they are the type of people that I like to use as, as examples of, okay, so here's a guy that's, you know, super conservative, really quietly spoken, not an extrovert by any stretch of the imagination, and suddenly he's got a framework that he can use that brings people on as clients, you know, and that's, you know, often th- those are the type of people that I end up helping, you know, the people that have got this technical skill, like maybe they're a, a really a really um, successful engineer or they're a really, really successful financial advisor or, you know, they're an absolute whiz when it comes to to helping people to to structure their you know their, their their property or 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 they just they they have a particular expertise but it's you know none of it is rooted in 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 a sales type background and they they come to the realization you know and all the inconvenient truth that that they've actually got to learn how to <laughs> how to structure a conversation where somebody's more likely to say yes and and that's what gives me you know that's what kind of you know really motivates me because you know I see these these people and and the and the transform transformation that we can create for them, and, uh, and and that's why you know I guess I'm so passionate about what I do. Well, it's definitely one of the reasons that I consider you an influencer because you go beyond here's how to sell and you know people think well you know peddling products you know that's what a lot of people say you know what what do you need me to sell I'll sell it. You go beyond that because what you just talked about demonstrates how critical sales is to commerce how critical it is that you that it's not just about uh, selling widgets but you help people that have true gifts and talents and abilities and they may be tactical abilities or they may have a great product or a great service but without the ability to sell there is no business and when you help people like that you not only provide a service and some life-changing, um, you, you know, information and guidance to them. You're also helping the people that they're able to uh, help with their products and their services because they are able to to sell it uh, with confidence and uh, by being that that educator. So what I want to ask you is. Uh, it's clear that you have the, these skills, and it's clear that you you have the ability to to uh, transfer these these skills to your students what inspired you to not become a salesperson because we we talked about that but what inspired you to help others not just be salespeople but to be great salespeople the thing that inspired me the most was the i guess the flatness of my own learning curve you know the the amount of mistakes that i had to make along the road to becoming good at sales it was it it was just such a long road and and i had i had 
people who I would consider mentors along the way, but no one who really gave me the 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 types of frameworks that that I help other people to use today, which which can really speed up their their level of success. So instead of something, you know, being trial and error and taking years and years and years, which is the way a lot of people learn, I can help people to really fast track that that ramp up to 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 getting success a lot faster in in their sales role. And and I and I guess you know same reason why I wrote the book. I I, I wrote the book that I would love to have, have been able to read, you know, when I was learning. I am the person that I would love to have met <laughs> when I was first learning sales, you know. So that, that that's that that's the main thing that that motivated me to 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 set up a business, which I've you know I've sort of now been doing it for twelve years, helping other people, and and I've 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 never had such a ball in business. I I just really love it. So it's it's um it's certainly a passion for me as well. Well, like you know, like I said at the beginning of the show, you you certainly have the passion, especially. Uh, for being uh, in the AM in Australia, the, the, that passion, <laughs> that passion comes through without a doubt. So, um, how can people find out more about uh, John Blake? Uh, find out uh, one how to get a copy of uh, High Stakes Selling, uh, the book, and um, find out how to get involved more with uh, with what you're doing out there. Okay, well, to get a copy of the book, the, the book is available on, on Kindle and also in paperback on Amazon. So if they do a search for high stake selling and, and my name, then it'll, it'll come up straight away. Or they can go to my website, which is www.john-blake.com.au. Uh, or they can just do a Google search for John Blake sales and, and, and I'll come up. Perfect. Well, John, I got to say, you know, I, I thank you for uh, getting up early, and I know it's even a holiday than there in Australia, and and sharing this uh, with us. It's it's tremendous information, and you know, you're really providing some remarkable, um, you know, life changing information to people that are out there that have made that commitment, and and that is how they support their family. It's how they. You know, they they uh, are building their lives is through sales and through commission sales. And you've just made a tremendous difference for not just them, but but their family as well. So thanks for so much for coming on and uh, sharing that with us today. It's my pleasure, Jack. All right, folks, there you have it. Definitely check out John Blake, uh, the book, High Stakes Selling Real Life, Highly Effective Strategies for Winning Sales When It Really Counts will have the links there on the show post uh, along with his uh, website. And until next time on Influencers Radio, remember, you are the only real game changer. You've been listening to Influencers Radio. To get all past shows and updates on future shows, visit InfluencersRadio.com today or follow us on Facebook at Facebook.com slash Influencers Radio.